it. Don't fall out the window, Timothy. Another day, another window. I oh, know I'm wearing the same old jumper. And the biggest one. We only got this one and the bathroom mishap to fit. And then we're done. Anyone else think that this might be in the two person priority yesterday? That's the bottom, so that's annoying. You ready for the big lift? I'm not sure I am. Main problem is 500ml step, leg day. Right, give the tractor a rest now. Just didn't trust the hydraulics. All right, it's in and it was relatively smooth getting it in. What I need to do now is just check levels. Now, the, the walls are as plumb as they can be, but remember, because the because it's a caravan, it's on chassis, it's always gonna be able to move. So what we're making sure is the walls are the square to the floor, and obviously the wall, uh, the windows, therefore a flush with the outside of the wall. So we know that whatever the wall is, the windows are, windows are, usually you'd be checking way more with spirit levels. I'm referencing the sill. I know that my sill is accurate from my floor. So if my floor is off a tiny bit, obviously I need to try and level underneath the chassis a little bit. But if my floor is off a little bit and it's exactly the same as the sill, then I'm packing up evenly. Then I know my window is parallel with my sill and my floor, and therefore anything I do to level up the chassis afterwards, I mean, we're talking, you know, four, three, four mil. Let's get a screw in here. Safety screw. Now every window I've fitted in the past, I've checked my sill, because obviously we were in old, an old house last time. Check the sill. It, ordinarily be off a little bit so I'd get my packers I'd set them out on the stonework or the brickwork or whatever it is make sure that whatever was required was put down a little blob of silicon or something to hold them in place and then at that point I know that if the window sits on those packers it's exactly level and where it needs to be in this case, I, because I'm working alone, because the windows are pretty tight to the openings, you know, we're talking, I've left 10 mil, but actually the tolerance is probably 10 mil on the sides, but a little bit less top and bottom. They said 50 mil from the side. All right, let's just try that. What we almost did is put a couple of windows in, pretty much the same size as this, but vertical. There's like a picture window. We were gonna do it at the end of the hall, um, but we needed a bedroom there, so we didn't. And actually, we didn't know precisely where this w cabin was gonna be sited. Therefore, we didn't know exactly what the view was. Normally, when you build a house, you know, that way is sunset, there's beautiful trees down there, we'll put a big picture window there. You can't really guess. Um, if you don't know exactly where the cabin is going to be. We knew that this elevation, uh, which faces west, which faces all the fields, 
as does kind of this corner were the priority. So we've gone for bigger windows there and patio doors. Hopefully that means that we're light enough here, natural light wise anyway. Remember, we still got that patio door to let through light, but equally not crazy amounts of glass for heating reasons. For the time being, that is screwed tight. It's in approximately the position I need it to be, but hopefully I can steal Joe for a few minutes later and we can do sign language through the window so that I can flush it up on the outside, she can get the screws in and then I can get on and tape it to make it weatherproof. Next up, we need to do some bathroom window surgery in here. You might remember in the last video, I made a bit of a boo-boo by ordering the same height window for the bathroom as everywhere else in the building. What in there? <laughs> Huh. In actual fact, we wanted a little shorty up here. That was so that it would be away from the shower and up high enough over the bath anyway. We can't do that anymore. So we've uh, decided to swing the bath round along the wall, almost exactly the same bathroom layout that we used to have at the old house. Anyway, I need to get on and cut this. Fortunately, it's relatively straightforward. <laughs> Now what the easiest thing to do right now would be is to get a multi-material blade in a reciprocating saw and just chop straight down. Uh, but I lent that out. Right, while I get PPE'd up, ready to chop this out, it's Christmas special offer time. And no, I'm not talking restoration couple mugs, I'm talking Isotunes, they are our channel sponsor and they have been for a long, long time. They've given us a special offer to share with you and I know a lot of you take them up on these offers when they come up. And of course we're coming up to Christmas so you might need some hearing protection or someone you know. And what's more is you get two pairs. So basically you spend £100 on any of their products in the next week using our code. We'll put it all down in the description and you get a free pair of air defenders. Much cleaner than these. We've actually got two pairs because they are our favourite and I'm probably not meant to tell you that because they're one of the least expensive models, but they're just super comfy. They're just simple, you know, yes, they're missing out on some of the battery life of the bigger versions. Yes, they don't have the aware function, so you, when you're not using a tool, you can't hear anything still. The aware function's got a built-in microphone, which is very, really clever. But apart from that, these just are go-to for nearly everything. So they're what you get for free. You've got to spend 100 pounds on whatever products there's also discounts on the products at the moment as well so if you do your totaling up make sure you're over the hundred pound mark make sure you add these to your basket you'll get them for free anyway let's get on with the chipping and chopping Definitely a benefit to using dry construction like this. You know, OSB, then we've got our sheep's wool, we can just rip that. Wood fiberboard, easy to chop out, and within five minutes, we've reconfigured this. We, we could put in new openings, we could put in new doorways, we could make things smaller. It's nice and easy to work with. And I tear off a piece of sheep's wool like this. I can use that, and what we will be doing, I've uh, decided not to get the window rope which is the sort of insulating rope of sheep's wool that you tuck in around the window. I'm actually just going to use it, we've got so much around so if you basically take off a section like this, I might even get the kids to do it, like yarn I guess, into sort of a loose maybe 15-20 mil. We can then just get that on the side of the window and with a knife, or even just a spacer, you know, a plastic spacer, which I've had in my pocket all morning, something like this, we can then go along the side of the window and we can force it right into the back of our void uh, and just keep filling it. Then we've got a nice, breathable, sustainable way of filling that without just jetting in a load of foam. That said, we might end up using some foam if we need to, uh, just to make sure we can get right to the back or if it's too small, too thin a gap. Right, we can't cut through the nails, 
So. Smack it out. If we're lucky. Look at that. Couple of nails in there. In the front there. Bish bash bosh. Snap those off. Chop that out. Don't fall out the window to the feet. Alright, let's make sure we've got everything on hand. Smallest window last, but it's bound to be where the problems happen. Well, they've already happened, haven't they? Right, I'm just going to use a bit of tape to get this membrane to stay put. If you ever need just a general purpose tape that's really, really good and uh, sticky, foil insulation tape is some of the best, I find. There's not much it doesn't stick to and it really is quite permanent. Now remember, because of the spec and the way that our windows are positioned in the wall, we don't need to put our sill tape on this time. We're just going straight in, flush. That's it, I can go around and uh, tape up the outside now. I can do some fine adjustments in from the inside, but the way we tape it, because it's being taped to the membrane, there's still a little bit of give, but it means I can go into the weekend knowing that this is completely weatherproof. Obviously we weren't for an opener, being that it was a bathroom. Got extraction up there as well. But because you've got the frame, then you've got the actual sash. Not a huge amount of glass here, but should be alright. We've got light walls and panelling going in here, plus good lighting. So our last two windows are in, probably the most problematic out of all of them. However, next up we're going to be doing the doors and then we're pretty much nice and cosy and we can stick the heater on and enjoy a bit of, uh, bit of warmth. Anyway, here's a quick look at how the outside flashing works because we didn't cover it in the last video we were purely filming inside this is exactly what i did on all of the windows now it follows the spec which is sent out by the tape manufacturer and also the same company who supplied our wood fiber boards and they deal with a lot of these products so the first stage is to install the lower tape which comes along the bottom of the frame of the window that sticks onto the window as much as you're going to be able to cover it. We were happy to go ahead and put it onto the front surface of the frame because we've got a reveal timber trim going into it. Otherwise, you can stick it before you fit the windows. You can stick it to the inside of the frame, a bit like we did on the internal tape. Once you've installed the bottom one and you've rolled and squeegeed that nice and tight, you can do the sides. They overlap. You're always thinking about basically the water direction and then finally the top and the top flashing is what then overlaps everything else. And that's it, the bathroom is weatherproof. In a future video we'll get these battens secured properly in a position where we know that the reveal trim will sit nicely, it will cover this tape and give us a point where we can put a sealant between it and the black frame of the window. If you haven't checked out our previous video where I went If you haven't checked out our previous video where we fit all the remaining If you haven't checked out our previous video where we fit all the other windows, I'll put a link to that at the end of this video and also down in the description and you can see the whole process, how the tapes work on the inside and all the windows in their fitted glory. As always, a huge thank you to our channel sponsors, iTunes including their offer, which I'll put down in the description. So Speedy, of course, for sponsoring this whole project and making all these videos possible. 
and finally to all these lovely folks on the screen right now who support us over on Patreon and there's all sorts of goodies over there you can go and get your teeth into and some behind the scenes stuff as well. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.